uh, for your liquid lunch. I'm joined again by my buddy Gary Goldman, who comes to us from uh, Beantown. He's a national political analyst, radio talk show host, and he's heard uh, on Boston's WCRN AM 830. So, Gary, the big talk today, and I think it's a lot of rhetoric, but I don't really see why, is uh, this pre-debate drug test. Um, I don't see why anyone would object to that if you're not on drugs. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, I look at I agree with you. I believe President Trump at the time asked Hillary Clinton to take that same drug test. Joe Biden's not going to his camp's not going to agree to anything. If he shows tonight, John, there's, there's, there's still that part of me that until I see Joe Biden on the uh, stage there, I'm not I don't believe anything because it's just been such a strange uh, election cycle so far. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to ask my team. Hey, Mike, can you look on uh, DraftKings or FanDuel and see if they have odds on Joe yeah. Biden showing up tonight? <laughs> that, that, yeah. that might be a great prop bet to throw in. You know what I mean? Throw $100 on Joe Biden no show. Um, it's probably some big odds. But uh, I, I find it weird that the entire left wing media apparatus is jumping up and down, screaming and yelling about Donald Trump's tax returns, right? They want to see his tax tax returns from even before he was in office and all this other stuff. Uh, professional athletes across all leagues um, are open to random drug testing at any time. And uh, why would it be a big deal if you're thinking about voting for somebody for president to know if he's on drugs? Yeah, it should not be a big deal. And I think that sort of tells the story right then and there. And I, look, if there's something going on with Joe Biden, I'm not sure any of us have really figured it out. And I've read some, you know, Research, researched it, and there are a lot of questions. I think Donald Trump is bringing up a legitimate question, and if he's not on drugs, why not take the test, John? Just get it over with, put it behind you, yeah. and then start talking about the issues that need to be talked about. Yeah, and um, I saw uh, Donald Trump's former doctor, Ronnie Jackson, last night on one of the uh, networks, and he was saying that um, when they were, if you remember a few years back, they were digging into Donald Trump's uh, medical history right. and this, that, and the other thing. And Ronnie Jackson was saying, hey, you know, these, these committees, they wanted to know every drug he ever took, every pill he ever took, anything that he was ever afflicted with. They wanted every last thing down to when he took, you know, an antibiotic for a cold. Um, and it sure seems to me like this is the most coddled presidential candidate I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he's coddled. And uh, the question is, if he shows, we'll see if he shows up tonight. And if he, you know, during the election, if there's some godforsaken reason, if he ever pulled this out, and there's a reason, there are reasons the American people should be concerned that are Trump fans here, um, you know, who's going to take over? Because there's if, if what we see of Joe Biden right now in the, the mess ups he makes, even with a, you know, if his teleprompter goes out, there's something physically and possibly mentally wrong. I'm not trying to make fun of the guy or he's on some sort of medication that they're trying to, you know, keep him looking a uh, student and, and being able to answer questions. But uh, there's something wrong. Look at the hypocrisy of the left on this question. You just tackled it, John. They wanted to know everything about Donald Trump. When you ask them about Joe Biden, they go silence. It's mean spirited. We shouldn't be asking those questions. But that is their modus of operandi all along. Yeah, and uh, I tell you, if they have him on drugs to make him more astute, remind me to never take that drug because he does not exactly. look astute at all. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and it's would also the other side of that is it's showing you know if that is the case, what terrible shape he is in. Uh, physically and possibly mentally. Yeah, and you know what? Um, you know, uh, I saw Jake Tapper um, <laughs> on on the Clinton News Network, and he was interviewing interviewing uh, Joe Biden's wife. Um, and she said, you know, what about these gaffes here and there? And she said, that's it, that's it, no more gaffes, no more gaffes. And she was, like, joking. And Jake Tapper, of course, he doesn't follow up and ask her anything. Well, right. tell me more. Um, but, Gary, truthfully, a gaff is... You know, earlier in the show, I, I have two Michaels on today. So I, I was looking at the wrong sheet, and I introduced my first guest as Michael Saltzman, and it was Michael Beatrice that was with us, right? That's a gaffe. I made a mistake, right? right? right. Joe Biden is not making gaffes. He, 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 he's saying things that appear to be coming from a deteriorated mind. Like, for example, he said that he, he, he went to an HBCU, a historically black college or university, in uh, Delaware State, 
And Delaware State had to come out and say, uh -huh, excuse me, you didn't go here. <laughs> you know, right. that's not a gaffe. That's, no, that's, yeah. that's just loss of mind. Yeah, we all, when we're doing things, can slip up with our tongue and we're thinking faster than we're speaking or vice versa. And uh, look at what did he say the other day? It was in the Senate for 180, some crazy number. I mean, look, look at that's There's something wrong with him. And, and as we, I think I said the last time I was on with you, John, it's sad when you think about it that, you know, they're, they're putting him out there if there is a medical problem. Never mind, you know, the severity and what it means to the country as a whole, but just to the him himself, I, I just, I, it's unconscionable from my perspective. Yeah, I mean, look, I was never a big Joe Biden hater. I was never right. a big Joe Biden lover. Um, I just always thought he was, you know, standard lifer, swamp creature. And, you know, you take what he says with a grain of salt. He's been in right. it for life, right? I was never a hater. Um, and it is sad because you kind of look at Joe Biden like, eh, that's like Uncle Joe. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. now you could see that. He's really, to me, I've been saying he's a vessel um, because he's just carrying the water for, you know, the Obamaites and the Clinton cartel and, you know, Bernie, you know, as much progressivism as they can stick into one vessel. That, that's what I see them doing. And they're using the guy really as a puppet at this point. Right. And should he ever get into office, then they'll push, either push him aside or somehow he will resign and, you know, Kamala or someone else will be running this country, which is scary to think. But uh, yeah, I'm the same way. I look at, I don't agree with a lot of his politics. I respect the guy, uh, but at the same token, um, it's a, it's shameful what's happening. And we're, look at it, it's dangerous. Never mind that, John. It's shameful, but it's also dangerous for, for what they're trying to pull over on the American people. No doubt about it. Uh, in our final couple of minutes here, um, of course, Washington's heating up. We're having a big debate show here on Biz. We're covering it wall to wall. But, um, you know, Trump's taxes, um, you know, this is the big distraction now, taxes. And, you know, Gary, a lot of people don't realize this, and I preach about this all the time, that people don't realize when you get a tax refund, that means you overpaid the government, and they're refunding you. Hey, you guys paid us too much. We held it for a year. Here's your money back. People look at it as like, ooh, I got money back from the government. It was your money to begin with. Sure. Um, and Trump has only done what every great billionaire does is figure out ways to use the tax code to your advantage. And he paid $75 million between 2006 and 2018. So I don't think many people in this country have paid more taxes than him. No, look at every, look at every tax return tells a story about the, the corporation that, that the, the, uh, the return references. And again, just like you said, John, he, people are under the impression that he... He, they, he just they're giving him this money he's he's paid money in he's overpaid and in many cases he hasn't taken a refund he just applies it what they are forgetting though is how important it is that president trump in his business life is a risk taker an entrepreneur and he's added value to the country added value in regard to hiring thousands of people payroll taxes property taxes and the democrats and the left have an obsession with this tax return. And if this is all they got, John, for the money they, they spent trying to get these returns illegally, they're not very good business people. And if there was something bad there, or something illegal, they would have been all over it, and so wouldn't the IRS. No doubt about it. Um, you know, they use the term uh, tax avoidance. Like, that sounds brutal, right? Um, yeah. I would say almost every one of us, Gary, uh, engages in some form of tax avoidance. Um, you know, many people don't know that your accountant takes no responsibility for your tax return. You're responsible for it. They only sign off that they prepared it for you. Um, but we all, you know, here and there try to throw a dinner in that was with the family and maybe, you know, we put it down as a business dinner or something. Um, and it goes through. We all try to avoid, we want to pay as little as possible in taxes, but, uh, I think, you know, if they had anything, there would be a smoking gun on the right. table and they'd be throwing a parade. Right. You pay, you, re, you know, you report all your income and you use, you leverage the, the IRS code of, to your, you know, to the degree that you can legally. And, and I think that's all the president has done. But this is just a lot of nothing. And you know what? You know, I know we'll talk about it on my show, but there comes a point where I won't even talk taxes anymore. Because look, at the president has proved to us that he can run this country, that he can govern this country. No doubt. Pulling this at the you know the the eleventh hour here is totally ridiculous. But yep. I, I, I look at 
Do I expect any less from the Democratic Party? No. Absolutely not. All right, that's Gary Goldman. We've got to leave it there. Gary, we'll talk to you soon. Get your take on the debate, hopefully one day this week or next week. We'll talk to you in just one moment when we come back and kick off Hour 2 right after this.